Hey, hey, CDA, and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is my bite-sized run, which is aimed at those of you who want to progress through the game without every build taking weeks to complete, but still have an awesome-looking factory. An awesome-looking factory, I think this is. I mean, we've only been playing for just under three hours in this playthrough so far. We have a pretty decent fuel factory set up. We have all our basics done, but now, of course, we want to expand on this because this is not going to cut it. We have only a single constructor making each item. Some of those are not actually automated completely yet. So let's go and fix that, shall we? Now, in order to keep up with this episode, you're going to need to unlock part assembly, which is in tier two, and it will give us access to the assembler. We'll also unlock four new items, which we're going to be crafting in an automated fashion in this episode so that will give us a huge boost to our progress and will be very satisfying once we have it done now you should have all those resources um, that you need for this pretty much on hand already you might have to craft some cables since we didn't automate that but because we do have the wire automated this should only take you about two minutes to make if that so let's make sure we have it unlocked and that's, let's start building Alright, so most of the items that we just unlocked are actually based on some form of iron production. And right now we only have two miners, two smelters and two constructors. And actually the reason I picked this starting location is because these two miners are on normal grade notes. Which means they are now producing 60 iron per minute. Which is exactly enough to fit into two of these smelters rather than one. And two of these smelters are going to be able to supply four constructors making iron rods. And another two are going to be able to supply into two constructors making plates. And that's exactly two ratio, so there's nothing going to waste there. And we're making full, uh, full use of our mines. And I'm actually going to have to turn this mine around in order to make some space. So this is going to be facing the other direction. And we can actually leave the smelters over here and that constructor as well. And... Let's make sure we keep her running, because that's a lot faster than the uh, alternative. And this needs to be turned around. Once again, press control in order to make sure everything you're building is aligned. Similarly, we're going to do the same thing over here. That should be aligned to this one as well. Yes. And let's make sure we start using our shortcuts now. Let's connect it up. That's great. Now we're going to have to redo this belt work just a little bit. Because, of course, now we have splitters and mergers that we're going to have to use. So a merger basically combines two belts into one. And we are going to have to place one here. Once again, press control so you can see the lines and then you know exactly that it's lined up to the front. Then all we need to do... Did I, did I do this incorrectly? I don't think I did. Oh yes, I did. This is not facing in the right direction. Bad TDA. There we go. Now this should now this should work. Yep. We need this mini mini mini. This one is also facing the wrong direction, of course. Yes. Fast building is not that fast if you let me do it because apparently I can't place down a merger correctly. Now actually this merger in the back over here doesn't need to be here. But like I've said I think in the previous episode I just like the looks of it. So why not? Looks are important in this game. And let's remove that belt as well. And we are going to need a splitter over here. And because we turned this around we have quite a bit of room to work with. And pressing E when you have the merge or splitter selected, by the way, switches between the two, so that's really convenient. And then let's make some belt work. Let's make sure we have nice 90 degree angles. One, two, and then this should go into there. And I'm ignoring the rocks once again, mainly because uh, we can blow them up later and I really don't want to have to get all my foundations up so high that we work around that. Now, of course, we do need to make sure everything is powered. And I do recommend actually powering it up as we're building this because that just means it starts already producing. And production is a good thing to have going whenever you can. Now, we have some excess power here as well. And we're going to need one more. I don't think this tower is going to cut it. Uh, they actually introduced a nice thing in the patch. That you can 
attach a power pole to a power line and just place it down. However, we actually have one left over over here, so now we actually don't need to do that. And now we have two constructors making plates going into this nice little storage unit over here, and that will work fine for now. Now, let's climb up here for a moment and talk about what we're going to do next. Okay, so in a moment we're going to upgrade our rod production, but before we do that, let's take a look at the new parts that we just unlocked because that will kind of feed into our design process. So first of all, we have the reinforced iron plates. We didn't actually just unlock that. We had that available for a while now because we need that in order to make the constructors. Uh, but we've been handcrafting that because we didn't have an assembler that could combine two items into one, but we do now. Now that is going to need the iron plates as well as the screws. So we ideally want to have the screws somewhere close to where we're making the plates so that we can combine those two into iron plates. Now, similarly, we are going to need rotors, which are actually made from iron rods as well as screws. And since the screws are made from iron rods, if we order them correctly, we should be able to make the rotors very close to where we're making our reinforced iron plates. Because basically what we want, we want to have the plates on the left, the screws in the middle, and then the rotors, sorry, the um, rods on the right. And that will actually allow us to place down constructors and assemblers in such a way that we don't have to have belts crossing. Then finally, we are also going to need modular frames and smart plating. Modular frames are made from the reinforced iron plates as well as the rods, so no screws involved anymore. Um, but those actually fed into the reinforced iron plates, so that's very nice. And then we are also going to need smart plating, which again is using iron plates, but also the rotors. So basically, this is slightly less advanced than the smart plating. Now the smart plating can only be made in assembler so you can't actually handcraft this which is why we want to make sure we prioritize making smart plating so we can actually uh, progress with the space elevator in a uh, next episode probably but we're also going to want to make sure we are making some of the rotors and modular frames because we are going to need those for other items so we're trying to mix all of that and just have a small production of everything we're not going to need huge amounts of frames rotors or smart plating at least not for now so it's fine as long as we're just making a little bit of everything. Then while we're building something else, we'll get the little production that we need. And we can just run back, pick it up and progress and keep things moving that way. Now I'm actually going to remove a couple of these items just for a moment. So we have a little bit more room to work with. And I want to slightly redesign how this looks. We also have this standalone facility over here. So let's remove all of that. Uh, there's a couple of leftover items that I will deal with in a moment. We're also going to want to expand this platform just a, a little bit. So let's have that go out one more to the side. And then just to keep everything nice and organized, I'm going to redo those power poles. And is that connected? Hello? Yes, it is. There we go. We are going to set up these power poles just a little bit more like this. Because that's just how I like my facility to look. Okay, so let's remove this. Let's remove this. And let's remove all of this. There we go. We have some floating stuff over here as well. That we can remove. Now ideally you want to remove all of this in one go. With the mass delete button. There we go. And now we are going to need some smelters. Let's see. Um, I want the... Yeah, this should work like that. One. Let's make sure we don't drop off into a cliff. There we go. That's two of those. Then we are going to need four constructors. And I recommend laying out your constructors first before you do anything else. Actually, we're going to have to do this slightly different, I think. But for now, this will work. One, two, three, four. And that's just, this is exactly why I recommend not doing it in this order. Or at least not doing everything before you have your basic facility laid out. Because obviously, that was cutting it a little bit too close. So, let's see. We can have two of these facilities like this. Actually, what we can do, uh, it's a little cheeky, but why not? 
Let's do it like this. And then we can have a belt feeding into the back over here, into this one, and then out on this side, and then inside this new facility. Why is this floating? That's, oh, there's a little stone there. Okay, that's interesting. There we go. Um, there we go. Yeah, this should all be nice and organized. And then we're going to need a couple of storage boxes, but let's climb up the ladder just to make it a little bit easier to organize. I really recommend working top down. It just makes it a lot more visible what you're doing. And yeah, that just makes things a lot more convenient in my opinion. So we are going to need a couple of things. We are going to need the screws. So let's make sure we have a storage unit over here. Now, actually, we are only going to need half of these um, constructors making or rotors. So our, um, not rotors, I keep saying rotors, but I mean the screws in this case. There we go. And we are going to need some more reinforced iron plating. So let me go and handcraft a few. And we're back with a lot more materials. I actually also crafted a couple of rotors. So, and this time I actually do mean rotors. Um, because we're going to need those for those assemblers that we're going to construct. So we're going to need three constructors to make screws. And then oh, let's just place down another one of these storage facilities for the plates. Now... The opinions about this vary, but I actually recommend not making a storage unit for the screws. You're not going to need that many screws. And if this ever backs up anyway, uh, you can just pick up the screws from the actual constructor. Now, we are going to need a couple of things, but we actually need a lot more space as well. So let me move my tower and then let's continue. All right, and after handcrafting some more rotors as well as reinforced iron plates, we now should have enough to make our assemblers. So let's place one down over here. It's going to be our reinforced iron plates. And then let's have one over here. And that is going to be our rotors. Then we should place, I think, a storage unit somewhere over here let's give ourselves a little bit of space that's going to be our rotors and then we have at least the surplus of our rotors i should say then let's make sure it's aligned to the other one okay this is annoying me so let's just jump down because we're going to need some more space anyway uh, let's place it down over here why won't it align there we go there we go that's better um yeah that looks good uh we're going to have to deal with this pesky tree in a moment but for now let's just move on we are actually going to need a few more cables so let me go and pick some of those up all right that was really quick just a matter of hopping to the other facility and picking up some of those uh cables that i had cooking over there now let's put down another assembler somewhere like over here I think this is going to be, is that enough space? No, let's make sure we leave ourselves a bit more space. You always need more space than you think. So might as well make use of all the space we have over here. Now that's going to be one facility making. Is the tree getting in the way? Yep. Well, we can easily take care of that. Because we have our chainsaw. Here our mighty chainsaw. There we go. Hopefully I can jump up here. Nope, of course not. That would have been way too easy. Let's make use of this tiny little rock over here to get up. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, there we go. All right, so placing back the foundation. Let's make sure we add a couple of rows to our foundation as well. Goes a lot easier with Zoop. We have... Not a huge amount of concrete production, but as you can see, it's enough to do some pretty extensive building over here. And then finally, let's place down our last assembler over here. Now, I think it's not aligned with the other one just yet, is it? This one is on the edge. So let's make sure it's nicely aligned. There we go. All right. Now, I actually need to set up a lot of... Um, belts and splitters and merges and stuff like that so let me do that and we'll meet back once that's done 
And I'm done. And as you might have noticed, it looks slightly different than how I initially set it up. And the reason for that is very simply, I promised you a nice looking base and I wasn't completely satisfied with how it was turning out. And this is the first real progress and sizable facility that we've built. And like I said, I wanted to look nice. So I reorganized things a little bit. We still have the reinforced iron plates on the left and the rotors on the right. But I now placed the smart plates in the middle. Because remember, the smart plates are being made from the rotors as well as the uh, reinforced iron plates. And as you can see, I have a splitter in front of those. And this belt is actually moving all the way back and feeding into the back in this one in the middle. And then the output simply goes into a storage unit. Now, I have three storage units in a row as well that are making sure we're gathering up about half of the rotors, half, well, not, not half, all the smart plates that we're making, and half of the uh, reinforced iron plates. Because, of course, we do need some reinforced iron plates for our own production, as well as some for the smart plates. Now, on top of that, we have the um, modular frames on the right over here. And I just aligned that in such a way that it's nicely aligned with the other storage units. And then actually I completely forgot to put in the last belt. And that needs to go something like this. Let's move it to back and then I like that. There we go. Uh, and then we have the modular frames over there as well. You can see some coming out already. Now this is not going to be producing at a high speed, but we are already producing at such a level that we actually needed another biofuel burner. So I placed one more, so we have a total of four biofuel burners up and running right now. Running on biofuel, the solid biofuel of course, and as you can see I'm still producing some more. I cut down some of the trees that were getting in the way over here. So as you can see we are doing a pretty good job at deforesting our starting area. Um, and yeah, the solid biofuel actually burns for a very long time compared to leaves and wood and stuff like that. So it's a very nice thing to have. But you always need to make sure that you're producing some new biofuel while you're burning up your current stockpile. Because otherwise you'll get into a situation where you're out of power uh, and then you need to start gathering it, but you don't really have a nice way to produce it. So keep that in mind, always have, uh, at least until we automate our power, make sure you have some production of solid biofuel up and running. Now, um, what else is there to note here? Well, you can see this belt going uh, through a lift over here. So we have the reinforced iron plates that are being sp split three ways. And some of that is actually going all the way over here into another uh, merger over here and then going into the um, modular frames. Now, I'll actually quickly show you how you build that because it's, it's really not all that hard, but... You might not be familiar with it if you're new to the game. So well, let me just set something up as a demo. So let's say we have two of these um, splitters or mergers. Then we can grab a lift from over here. And then the lift actually connects right to that. And you can move the top part once you connect it the bottom part. So we need to make sure this is uh, pointing in that direction. Then we need an input on this side, which happens to be on the far side. So let's do it like that. And then once again, you can, which, while scrolling the mouse wheel, you can align that. And now we have that set up. What we can do is we can simply select a belt. And it should be perfectly aligned. So as long as you make sure your splitters are exactly where you need them to be, um, then connecting the belts is very straightforward. And you can put those up like that. So um, that actually allows us to progress quite a bit. So let me jump to the hub and let's walk through that. So quickly looking at the hub terminal, we should now be able to unlock field research. We have all of that automated. We should also be able to complete the resource sync bonus program that will allow us to build the awesome sync, which is awesome indeed. Um, nothing special really needed for that, but we can also now get the Mark II belts, which is going to be very, very useful. And we need to reinforce iron plates for two reasons. First of all, we need those to unlock these belts, but we also need them to actually build those belts. So that's why it's really important that we get our reinforced iron plate production up and running. Now, other than that, we don't have anything unlocked just yet. That means we should be focusing on getting uh, to our space elevator built and completing that. And that is where the smart plating comes in.
everything we've built today you should be able to complete in about one and a half to two hours of playtime. I did it slightly faster but I'm a little bit more experienced although I did actually redesign the entire thing while I was building it so yeah I think one and a half to two hours should be very doable for making this. In total I think everything we've built so far so that is this facility uh, including the um, the fuel facility, the coal facility, or sorry, not the coal, the copper facility, as well as this this little tiny concrete facility that won't do for very long, but we have it anyway. Um, everything we've built so far should take you about four hours to build if you follow what I've been doing. So um, that's maybe not a world record or anything, but I think it's pretty straightforward. And we now do have all the basics we need in order to progress without having to handcraft too much stuff, but also without overproducing anything so that we run low on power all the time and things like that, because you really do not need huge stockpiles of everything. You just need enough to make sure you can get to your next build. Speaking of which, we have some very nice things to do in the next few episodes. So make sure you join in for that. If you're here and you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one.